This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 436. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And we're ready to get going with you as the train goes by. The sun is setting on a daylight savings. What time is it? I don't know anymore. And damn, I need to buy lines for the studio. But anyways, with <laughs> us, first of all, in studio, we have with us our uh, uh, gadget person with Big Bank International Esquire. <laughs> he is, you're, you're a representative for tonight, he is Ron Krause. Crazy Krause on the Twitters is with us. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? I, I'm glad you braved Pittsburgh traffic. Apparently, it was pretty Yeah, yeah it was tough today. Yeah. And I got a haircut for the show. Look at you. <laughs> I, gave you I gave you less than 24 hours notice, and you're like, I need a damn haircut. Yeah. Yes, I did. Wow. Man, damn, what's fancy. my excuse? Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us and we have uh a return and a newbie on the show first of all we do have scott mctaggart with us hello back again previously thanks for having me i uh i'd be i'd like to be treated like the newbie if that's cool okay right we're we'll just pretend that i'm a baby pretend woods. that you've never been here before i heard you missy but you don't have a mic so guess what you don't get, <laughs> you don't get a voice sorry Quoi? This is a, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, from a new upstart company I've heard of called Kernels. Yeah, that's here us. You're with us. And also, John Providence is here as well. Thanks for having with me. Kernels. Great right. to be here. Welcome. And we're going to hear what you guys are uh, kind of up to lately, uh, uh, later in the show. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited to, to, to get into that. Now, you have to treat him, though, like this is like his 12th appearance. And okay. you've got to ask him the hard questions. That's all. Oh, oh yeah. You're I'm going to tra- defer. <laughs> can no i ask deferring. the audience there's no deferring there's no lifeline here okay, okay. there's a little bit of can i ask the audience yeah, yeah because yeah. we're well known for our hard hitting questions yeah, 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 can yeah, i yeah. phone yes. a friend yes <laughs> i need to find pagoda stat <laughs> and a call in on the google hangouts but anyways this is the awesome cast you can check out everything at awesomecast.com you can hit us up email at uh, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com especially if you're interested in the advertising or if you want to join us in studio here uh to just see the see the show happen and see how this goes down and that extra banter that happens before we turn the recorder on uh so and you can also please uh go to awesomecast.com and find links uh to find us on your favorite podcast app and of course video versions on facebook and youtube and please while you're there please subscribe and rate us and uh and everything and comment thank you everybody that does comment on the youtubes as well and joins us here live every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern on facebook uh, awesome cast on Facebook Live. We are also streaming on other places uh, across the Sorgatron Media Network on Twitch, Periscope, YouTube, and a few other places that I can't pronounce in the gaming world. Uh, <laughs> so if you are joining us there and uh, have something to say joining us live, please hop over to the Awesome Cast Facebook. We are monitoring the chat room over there if you have something to say uh, to that. And I think we do have a couple gaming stories tonight too, so you might have something for that. Also, thanks to our streaming partners. First of all, our friends at the RiversEdgePGH.com that carry us Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. You'll catch the latest episode over there replaying. And our friends over at the 405Media.com out there on the West Coast uh, that uh, have us on there every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time. Uh, so go check that out. Catch that out. Catch out all the other content they have over there, including some other content from the Sorgatron Media Network. Um, also, thank you to our Patreon supporters. You guys got uh, uh, something a little extra. We we asked everybody what was what, what what was the social network that confounded you. I think is a good boil down of what that question was. Uh, that is something special. You guys are going to get at the Coffee Club five dollar level, including our friends uh, uh, first at the other end of the state, Matt Weller, and our buddy John Diggy Degore, and our friend at the fan of the show uh, dollar level. Thank you, Michael Fedor, who I think is the longest running patreon supporter of this show you guys can support the show if you get some value out of it and want a little bit of extra content at patreon.com slash awesome so 
Uh, so sorry, I'm getting notes from the producer. Anyways, uh, this is uh, it is time for the awesome thing of the week. And uh, 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 Crazy Krause, what is uh, what is your awesome thing this week? Well, as it, you it, know, Sorg, mm-hmm. I am a large man. <laughs> <laughs> All and the audio I, people didn't know. Oh, well, that's okay. They can. Okay. It's okay. I'm you okay with being like a, a fat large guy. Man. I'm okay with it. It's all right. You were but, audio svelte up until but about my two wife. Ago. That's right. But sound, my wife and I, I, I have say, made a decision. You, you do sound very thin. Thank you. I have a thin voice. That's nice. <laughs> yes. So my wife and I decided to make a change um, for some health reasons for her. And we decided to join Weight Watchers, give it a try, see how it goes. We signed up for a six month deal. We got, you know, they knock off to want the join fee. And I think they gave us a free month or whatever and the whole nine yards. But I have to tell you, after about a week and a half, a week, a little, little over a week doing it, I've lost over 10 pounds already. The app is very easy to use. And it would be the first quote unquote diet that I've been on in my life. That I wasn't hungry all the time. So I have to say, if anybody's looking for a place, you know, give it a try. It, it, for me and my wife, it's, it's working great. That's awesome. So that's the big thing because this is, these, these are the things that are always like, you know, a a paper booklet you had to fill out. Yeah. And, and now they're, they're like app versions of that. Right. You know, so that, that has really kind of worked out for you. Yeah, there's no, like, I know there are options where you can go to meetings and all this other yeah. stuff. I'm literally just doing the digital version of their, you know, their, I'm using their app. Basically, you pay for the right to use their app. Mm-hmm. So for the next six months, I'll use their app. And it really does. It, what's really been amazing is they assign everything a point value. So there's 200 foods right off the bat that you can eat that don't cost any points whatsoever. So you get so many points a day. I think I get like 50 points a day. You get so many points a day. When you run out of points, you stop eating because yeah. you just can't eat anymore. Mm-hmm. And um, But it really makes you think about every single thing that you put in your mouth and how many points it costs. The other night, just a quick little funny story. The other night we were at, uh, it was either Rite Aid or CVS. And they have that quote unquote healthy options bar, like where you can pick like snacks and stuff. So they'll have the regular snack food aisle, but then they have this little area that's supposed to be healthy options. Started scanning some of those barcodes with the app. And let me tell you, some of the choices they have on that bar, according to Weight Watchers, are not healthy options whatsoever. Is is a bit of the marketing aspect to it. Amanda Narcissi is in the chat room. Uh, we're going to be hearing about something uh, from her later in the show, too. Uh, she says, woohoo, I joined a few weeks ago, too. The app is amazing. Yes, it is. I, it, it's a really good app. If um, For my wife, who's not tech savvy whatsoever, she can get in there and do everything she needs to do. Like I said, the barcode scanner works great. Seriously, if anybody's looking to lose a little weight, it does cost you some money every month. How much? Um, I think it wound up being like nineteen ninety nine if you signed up for the six month plan. So is that I for can, both of you? Twenty dollars? No, for, no, it's each. each. That's yeah. what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So you know, so there is a little bit of financial commitment there, but I think that also will help me use the app more. And I have friends who were on Weight Watchers, and they say after about six months of being on it, you kind of get the flow of what it's going on, and maybe you don't need to use it. I don't know. I might keep using it. It, it just kind of re-educates you a little bit. Too. Yeah, like You have exactly. an awareness of like, no, okay, well, what is in this thing? You know, it, it's kind of yeah. like when you start looking at uh, like one one trick I did a, a few years ago was just start looking, picking things up, and seeing what has like high fructose corn syrup, mm-hmm. and that is amazing. Everything. It, it, yeah, it really so is. Uh, we 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 have friends that have an issue with particularly high fructose corn syrup yeah. and cannot oh, and it's, eat it. And, Almost it's just, everything. It's just yeah. such a problem. Like everything from like ketchup and things like that, right? Yeah. So um, no, I, I think that's good. You know, anything that kind of like changes your behavior like that, right? Um, I'm looking at the website. They do have uh, they do have plans. Uh, I guess as low as like three of three three dollars and seven cents a week. I'm sure that's like over a long period and probably like the more uh, trimmed down digital uh, parts of it and everything too. So there's a lot of levels. So I guess it's not bad to kind of step into. Yeah. And, and you were saying you're pairing this kind of with your Fitbit too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I actually just picked this up. This is the Fitbit 3. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason I got it was, and this is going to sound horrible, but if I didn't remember, because I, I use, my phone will count steps using Google Fit. 
Mm -hmm. So I get that step data. But if I didn't remember at the end of the day to put those that number in, the, in there, the next day, the way Google shows that information, it no longer shows steps. It comes up with this number that it uses. So I was missing days. So for whatever, I forget what this cost. I bought it at Sam's Club. You know, I threw it on a credit card. You know how that goes. Um, <laughs> it's not real money. Yeah, okay. right. It's not real money. So whatever this <laughs> cost, um, I bought it. And now the steps just automatically go right into the app. And it's just a whole lot easier. So, And probably in two weeks, you know, suddenly Google Fit will just work. But, you know, because that's my luck. But, but it works great. You know, counts steps. I don't have to think about it. They're in there. Gives me some ideas. Yeah, so a three-week. So the three-week is um, standard monthly fees, nineteen ninety-five. Starter fees, 20 bucks. They give you first month discount of 26 So, yeah, it's thirteen thirty-one. I guess, a week, a month for, you know, for the for the Weight Watchers to start. But we went with the six month because it just seemed like a better price breakdown. So that's my thing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, what about you, Scott? What's your awesome thing? Well, first of all, I want to, like, on Ron's thing, mm -hmm. I think one of the things that's interesting is the fact that you're – you're excited enough at this early stage, right? That, yeah. Like that's the thing. Whenever you're mm -hmm. trying to change behavior, mm -hmm. committing and being like excited about it is interesting. Yeah. Um, like that's what we always look for whenever we talk about interfaces and whatnot. So that's, that's intriguing to me. Um, this week, my awesome thing I'm actually directly related to, which is uh, Olga Pagoda and I uh, together, we are colonels and colonels is helping to run a, I know this is, really shocking for everybody. We're running a crowdfunding campaign. What? I know, right? Um, but this one's really, it's different. It's unique. Uh, the city of Clareton outside of Pittsburgh is a food desert. There are something like four different measures of what makes a food desert and Clareton qualifies for all of them. So there's a tech company called Panacea uh, based out of Alpha Lab Gear right now. And Panacea even at this early stage when they're in incubation. Did they just do something with Hardware Cup or something? Uh, they were, they did. The uh, they were the audience favorite from Hardware Cup. That's right. I Regionals. think I, I read their name when we uh, were going over that. Uh, Sharp Catch yeah. Sorg. Very nice. Yes, that's exactly what happened. So they pitched at the Hardware Cup Pittsburgh Regionals and they, yeah, they, they were the audience favorite. So they had the foresight to create a nonprofit wing of the company like mm -hmm. right out of the chute. And they call it greenhouses for everyone. They make these high-tech greenhouses, and they're going to tackle the food desert problem in Clareton with technology. So we're running a, a fundraiser. It starts on the 15th here. Um, check us out at krnls.co, and uh, you can you can follow along, kernels.co. I see you have um, a, I pulled up a page here about the, the video shoot for the GoFundMe here. Yeah, that was fun. Um we are going to do a proper crowdfund for this. There will be backer rewards. There is going to be a launch party over at Alpha Lab Gear on Friday night if you'd like to come out. It's at 6 o'clock. What we're trying to do is we're trying to show people that even though these people who literally have to get on a bus and ride six miles one way to buy fresh produce, mm -hmm. even though these people have every reason to like just, just lay back and you know give up, right? Like they keep coming up with go to ways. the Dollar General and they go to the Dollar General. They, they yeah, like there's a, a hundred different ways that this could go wrong. Um, they have this little shop. It's called Produce Marketplace, and on top of the Produce Marketplace, which can't sell a huge quantity of, of produce, uh, greenhouses for everybody is going to actually build one of these high tech blockchain, you know, like hydroponic automated greenhouses. And if we can raise like ten thousand dollars, we can do something like twenty four thousand heads of lettuce mm -hmm. and all these high nutrient density microgreens and all. Like this is legit. These guys cannot pass a sustainability, a feasibility uh, study for a grocery store. Mm -hmm. There's only like seven thousand people that live there. Yeah, and average income sort of blows them out of the water for a feasibility study. So you got to go up to Jefferson Hills in order to get fresh food for your family. More than a third of those those families have like kids at home. So what are they eating? They're eating crap off the plastic tree or mom and dad have to get on a bus and go three hours back and forth to bring back 
a smaller number of bags maybe than they want to bring back because I mean, let's be honest. And, and this is something where also um, in my I'm wearing the jacket tonight, so uh, you know in my travels and Lyft um, and Uber you know, back in the day, like I would end up down that way, and like I would end up picking people up from the Walmart. Yeah. And they're lifting, Ubering, spending an exorbitant amount of money just for transportation, right. and taking them to like the McKees ports and the and the Clarins and everything down. There. There's almost a third of the people so, down there that don't have access to a vehicle. Yeah. So that's why I say, like, it's a three-hour round trip on the bus, mm-hmm. right? And how many bags do you really want to take on a city bus? Mm-hmm. So now you're into multiple yeah. trips. Now you're, I mean, you're and sacrificing then, and for and your family. And meanwhile, I way. have filled the back of my SUV with people's groceries. Absolutely. You have. Oh, I believe yeah. that. Like, there, well, between there and, like, people with the, even the Whole Foods and the Giant Eagles in the middle of town. So. But Clareton, yeah. like, they have real mm-hmm. accomplishments down there. They've been, mm-hmm. like, state football champs. They've yeah. been... You know, their kids are educated. They are trying their best. They cannot catch a break. Yeah. Remember that, that Coke plant fire back in December, right? It's just like, just name one thing that hasn't gone sideways in Clarence lately, you know? So I, I, we're really proud to be a part of that campaign. Uh, it's going to run for 30 days from the 15th of March to the 15th of April. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, even if you can only spare like five bucks, I would love it for everybody to chip in and help Clarence out. Absolutely. When that goes live, we'll make sure to share it on there. Awesome cast network and hell, every network we got. I appreciate it. Sir. Uh, as much as we can. Legitimately. That's awesome. a big deal. Uh, John, I didn't know if you had another awesome thing or if they're kind of uh, along with this one too. No, I, Scott, that's a great story. Um, you know, you can count on contributions too. I mean, that's great. Good job on that. I, I did have a technology um, story this week. So I, for the first time, a company in Henrietta, New York called Veracity uh, they did an event, and it was an AR VR experiment. And you put on the mask. Well, first, I should have been more aware because I had to sign a waiver. <laughs> That's uh, always a good indicator, like, oh crap, what's something's gonna happen? Something cool's about to happen. And I'm like, I'm just playing a video game, right? No, but you got to sign a waiver. Mm-hmm. So you put the mask on, and you have to walk on the carpet, and you have to go up in the elevator, and you press top floor, and you go to the top floor. And I'm not thinking anything of it, but then the gentleman who's running this. Not only am I in the, in, the, in the visual, he puts the headphones down on my ear. So now I'm in the audio. Oh, yeah. And I hear the wind blowing at the top of the building. The elevator doors open up, and there's a plank. And you're oh. supposed to walk out on the plank, and you got wind in your ears. Your, eyes, your mind's playing tricks on you. The birds are flying by you, and you're supposed to walk out on this plank. So I got about five steps. I'm sweating bullets. There was about 35 people that had to sign the waiver. About 10% of them couldn't do it. So about four or five people couldn't do it. Um, Like literally get off the elevator and do it. Other people had no problem. The interesting things were kids had no problem doing it because of what the AR VR does and they don't have frame of reference and all that historical stuff that's already developed in their mind. They had no problems. The adults, I mean, we were... I'm on the end, end of this plank. Like, are my affairs in order? Is everything okay? <laughs> I was having a problem. Yeah, like, because the, your brain equated, okay, I'm standing on a plank, hanging off the side. Was of the there building. was there was there an actual plank there? It or, was okay. So I, I just just a quick search. I was just seeing if I could find the company. I found something on Steam called Richie's Plank Experience, uh, and and it's you know it tells you the type of plank to get. And the measurements oh, no. and everything oh, to, to do buy this. One. To, I'm starting to sweat. To physically have a plan. <laughs> this got to you. It, this it, got to me. Does this look like it might be uh, uh, the experience that you had there? Maybe. Uh, yes, it is. It, it is. is. It, okay. Yeah, yeah, it definitely looks like that. We did it on a, on a carpet. Yeah. And but you had to walk straight. It knew where you were. Um, but again, oh, I had the video on. It was no problem. But once yeah. you put the audio on. I lost all that's frame of reference. But it's just audio. It's and not the, like motion, right? Well, it's the just, thing is, when you're in the elevator, you don't hear the wind. Right. And when you step off the elevator, you then go outside to the plank. God, and then the wind hits you from right to left. And I got to tell that's you. That's cool. So did they have a fan on you or something? No, it was or just. Or is all in the audio? <laughs> total panic session. Oh, wow. Total. <laughs> now, I wonder, is this the same kind of technology that they're using? Star, they're doing a thing with Star Wars. I heard about in a couple places hmm. where you're a stormtrooper and you have to go through on a mission and everything. 
It's some Don it. I think it's uh, it Disney. Disney's or doing one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, those are those are like the VR and, and and I think there is a little bit of like a tactile experience that they're building yeah. around it because they can build a pod for it, right? Right. So like, or but I think it's probably also along the lines of um the the one that the aviary had, and I and I saw the setup at the at the uh, airport once, uh, where you're laying on your stomach. And there's there's there, they have a fan blowing on you and it's a it's a flying like a bird experience. Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, I'm nope. gonna sign a waiver for that. Even though I'm laying on the floor, I'm signing a waiver. Like on you're that not one going too. anywhere, but you know, <laughs> but it was supposed to simulate the experience of like you know being up and the, and the thing that you're on like actually gyrates a little bit, oh, you know, great. and everything. So it's uh, yeah, I know it had been there. I knew it had been, um, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It, it was you know these. Experiences are pretty interesting, so that's kind of cool. That so, if you have a VR experience, we need to get a, uh, a hold of our friends at Looking for Group and see if they can set this up. Oh we, yeah, we go, like, guys, awesome. can we bring you a plank? I was just over <laughs> yes. there the other day. <laughs> yeah, I just went to LFG for the first time like a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. It's it's um oh you hadn't been? I had never been. Uh, Neither have I. So you just go in and it's it's every video game player's dream, mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. They've got the cool chairs, the headsets, the screens on, the computers on, and you just go nuts. And yeah, it's like um, for those of us that grew up with arcades, right? It's it's that, but for uh, the arcade, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's that for the games that these kids actually want to play. And um, I mean, the place—I I guarantee you—it's more than just kids. But when I was there, it was all t- like oh, yeah. middle and high schoolers. Oh yeah, and then a big board game. Uh, uh, community there as well. Yeah, it was uh, actually like yeah. one of those things. I know I'm like a delinquent, but it warmed the heart to see a bunch of kids wasting time on video games in a group. <laughs> it is that arcade. Again. I've, I've had that conversation here. I was like, I'd love to have an, uh, you know, a video game arcade kind of experience, yeah. like with one of these empty storefronts here. And then people were like, Oh, I don't know about that. It, was like, it brings the wrong like, Yeah. Oh, that was the discussion. I was like, Hey, uh, go look what's happening in Brookline, guys. Uh, you know, this well, isn't. How about the barcade? That's a the barcade. that's a whole new thing. Yeah. Now. Yep. That's right. People are building these everywhere. Arcade slash bar. You know, Dave and Buster's is a perfect Always example. Always was, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's multiples of those now. Uh, my awesome thing of the week. Uh, so, uh, travel season has started for me, and I uh, don't think it's going to mess with our schedule too much, uh, at least for a couple months here. Uh, but uh, it, this was the SAE Aero Design that I got to go check out. Uh, this is the event where, uh, and I'll actually throw a couple of pictures up here while we go, so you guys can kind of see. Um I can find where they start. Uh, so this is this is a lot of engineering students that are um, building planes. Uh, several classes of planes here. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Uh, including like micro, regular. They're doing this fun advanced um, stuff, and and uh, it, it's a pretty cool uh, uh, setup they have uh, going on. And again, this is these these are college students uh, building these planes, and uh, and this is an event put on by Lockheed Martin. This is just some of my phone video. Uh, and, and I get to, you know, go film and we're going to do the, uh, highlight videos and everything for them and, uh, did some interviews over the events and everything. But the cool thing that I wanted to talk about, and, and they had this at an event in California, but for, uh, some reason it couldn't, it didn't get going for, no, that was my barbecue I, I ate one night. <laughs> 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 they had a, I think this is the prop one. I think it's the next one actually. Um, oops. My iCloud thing is getting crazy. But there was a jet powered remote control plane. Oh, I got to see that. Plane. Well, How oh, fast I, does that thing go? I don't think this is it. It moves pretty yeah. good. It moves pretty good. <laughs> on that video clip, it did. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got the wrong one. Sorry, I misplaced myself. Oh, here it is. Here it is. We'll get this going. So, uh, and, and you don't have audio on this, but I shared one of these on my Twitter uh, at Sorgatron. You can check it out from uh, Sunday over there. And uh, it's, yeah, it, it sounds like a jet. It's go, uh, going for a pretty good clip. Uh, the maneuverability on this thing was absolutely insane. Uh, but uh, it was, it, it, this is a radio controlled, wow. jet fueled uh, uh, plane here. I was just amazed that it, it didn't crash. There it Should is upside down. Look at it. There it is upside yes, down. It, it yep. flies upside inverted. It's flying upside down. Gosh. It's doing yeah. inverted loops and everything. It'll 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 like come across. It was coming across the uh, runway and then just taking like a ninety degree turn, yeah. like sideways or up or yeah. or, or something. Um, these these were people that oh really knew what they were doing with this. Look at thing. that. Like it was it was pretty cool. 
Uh, so, and, and, you know, this is an entire weekend of watching, you know, everybody's, you know, prop planes go up and, and dropping targets and automated gliders and everything like that, which was also cool. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they had changed the, the this is the first year, they change, they have three classes, micro, regular, advanced, and they changed the rules like rotating every year. Advanced used to be just, you drop the payload mm-hmm. and do the telemetry and everything. Uh, this year it was, you can drop a payload which was Nerf footballs that do the uh, that do the squeal when you throw the, them. The whistle, oh, nice. yeah. So the, so you have like a payload of like three to like eight of these things all falling with that whistle. <laughs> uh, so it's like a really cool like like sound to it. <laughs> yeah, you know. And then cool. there's also like they can release an automated glider and, and it needs to land on the target and everything. So it was a lot of fun uh, and and just one of the cool things. And uh, the first of I think eight trips we're doing this year with SAE. Um, one of them, I know, I think I mentioned on the show is, uh, auto drive challenge with, uh, with, uh, general motors, the, uh, automated Very cars. Cool. Yeah. Terrific. So it's going to be the most interesting five mile an hour, uh, demonstrations that I'll get to film. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, right. after going from like Baja to this, so it's going to be sure. in a jet yeah. powered planes and all this kind of stuff. So, um, I do need to disclaim, um, uh, uh, the, the jet, uh, the jet power thing was not part of the SAE event officially. This was just a demonstration by the, uh, uh, the the RC club that was helping out mm-hmm. with the event, the which uh, in this case was the uh, the the Fort Worth Thunderbirds. This was in Fort Worth, Texas. The event was, and we'll be going to California back to Van Nuys here at the beginning of what is the next month, April, uh, to do the West version of this to oh, close neat. out the aero design portion, and then we can start with some Baja. Uh, and I'm and sure get I'll, muddy, and we get muddy. I love it. Get dirty. I get my uh, my uh, my gear ready for that. Anyways, in the meantime, I'm going to give it a shout out. Uh, you know, we, we, we're, we were talking a lot of tech history here uh, before the show. And of course, uh, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And thankfully, Professor Buzzkill uh, makes a learning history entertaining and humorous through his blog and podcast. Uh, we have a lot of fun checking out what he's doing over there. A friend of the network uh, over there, Professor Buzzkill dot com is another isn't there a connection i made over at uh work hard pittsburgh i love professor, professor buzzkill that's a great show it's great stuff uh and so go check them out uh over there at professor com. he's still still going strong do, still doing amazing topics out there uh including let's see irish things that are actually british <laughs> 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 and uh making of the non-smoker and including an episode on the green book a movie that uh, just won a bunch of awards uh, to get the actual history on that. Uh, so go check everything out at ProfessorBuzzKill.com. So we got you guys here. Uh, what is going on with Kernels, and what's this new stuff coming up? Well, uh, I don't know, man. You know me. <laughs> yeah, you know, stuff and things. I got stuff and things. <laughs> stuff uh, and things. Stuff and things. So I got That's th- deep. So uh, like a lot of – I think the last time I was on, we were talking about the show, Pitchworks. Yes. Right? And yes. And that's because and we haven't had you on since you went off and did that's that. true. We we got all kinds of catching up to do. Uh, so Pitchworks has been running for like two and a half years, and I don't know. Uh, I met Olga Pagoda, who's my business partner, because uh, long story short, she had a crowdfunding campaign for Boxy back in the day. Boxy, the three D printer, CNC mill, laser etcher company, and all of a sudden, like after the Boxy campaign came out. We got inundated with like these social media mentions and engagements and whatever. And it seemed like there was this one person who was kind of behind a lot of them. It's this Olga Pagoda. And I'm looking at this going like, who is that person? And it's the greatest thing ever. I'm looking at her Twitter bio and it's like, I'm a mom and a woodworker. And I'm also the liaison to, li- liaison to the White House and the DOD for the... N- <laughs> yes, exactly. That's my reaction too. Yeah. <laughs> Ron's over here doing a double take. Um, for the maker community throughout all of the United States. Like wow. they were building maker spaces for, you know, like the, the armed forces and stuff. So I had her on the show cause that's what you do when you find somebody like that. And we became yeah. fast friends. And next thing you know, um, like it started to become like pretty obvious that we share a brain. Um, we see a lot of the world the same way. And we formed this company kernels, which basically just helps people um, launch, relaunch, like helps them grow fast, helps them, you know, get what they need because that's one of the hardest times is like, nobody wants to lend you money when you need money. Nobody wants to give you talent when you have none. Sorry. 
I said that wrong because it's a thing I do. You know, nobody wants to give you money when you need the money, but nobody wants to come work for you as the talent mm -hmm. if you're not already like the superstar, right? So we started working with that. And then the next thing you know, bigger, cooler companies start coming out of the woodwork going like, hey, I think you could help us. I, I, I would just poke an interest. So you guys worked with Nibble? The, uh, the, the robot cat, the, yeah. The robot cat. We, another thing we've completely talked about on this show. I appreciated that, by the way. <laughs> I think I showed up in the comments that day. I think you did. I didn't expect for Nibble to, to show up on your show. I was pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, you know, one thing leads to the other. And then um, John Providence, who is seated to my immediate right, he's the vice president over at uh, Eagle Dream Technologies. He says, you know, um, ever since we got to be the number one AWS reseller, our phone's ringing off the hook and we can't really cover every, everything in your neck of the woods. Would you mind helping? You know, Mike, you've known me for a bit. I mean, I've got a background in technology stuff, not just podcasting. And it kind of just, it made sense. So um, that's, that's kind of what happened. We put out a press release and next thing you know, producer Misty is like, hey, this feels like this might be a show. So <laughs> here I am. By the way, I still wish you were mic'd today. I'm just saying. I think the show would, I think the show suffers when you don't have a mic. That's all I'm saying. We're working on it. Oh, I got a heart. Maybe. I got, got a heart. hand heart. Got a hand heart. Nice. <laughs> so, As John, uh, go ahead and tell them how I lied. Tell them no. how I made that whole story up. <laughs> and you're like, no, they were the low cost nice. provider. And even though they suck, we appreciate it. <laughs> no, they, well, no, well, that's the thing. Like, you, Scott's a fast friend. Olga's a fast friend. And yes, they absolutely share a brain. It's true. You know, yeah. as my daughter says, they finished each other's sandwiches. That's awesome. I like, like your daughter already. Frozen. That's how that goes. But yeah, so yes, having Scott on board and helping us drive uh, Amazon Web Services in Pittsburgh and really leading that charge and aligning with the Amazon teams is just really special. I just realized that we should probably should have talked about what clients we can't talk about on this show because I'm the guy who says like, oh, you know they're great because they work with Bank. And I'm not sure I'm allowed to do any of oh, that. Oh, you mean like Big Bank International Esquire? Yeah. <laughs> Big Bank International Esquire. <laughs> that's Big what you Bank said earlier? International yes. Esquire. Yes. Esquire. Yes. That's I'll, who I'll, I work I'll tell for. you afterwards who, they <laughs> yes. who that is. Ron, I'm happy to keep your secret safe. Yes. Because I don't <laughs> oh, know it. Oh, I don't make it a secret. <laughs> because they I, make it a secret. They make I don't secret. know your secret, yeah. so it's really easy for me to protect it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Got it. Don't tell Scott anything I don't want people to know. Every there word of that is true. Or tell him everything I want to leak out. Yeah. I. <laughs> All right. That's fine. Dude, I'm in the same way. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I, I've never had like a really easy time pretending to be somebody else. Yeah. I, I'm just a lot easier being transparent. And it's been good to me. My career's been good to me as a result. <laughs> you know, it's like you just find people who have problems and you go fix them. So, so John, tell us a little bit about uh, Eagle Dream Technologies and what you guys do over there. Absolutely. So, and thank you. So, big software development, doing things in a cloud native way. Focused on innovation, right? So how are folks leveraging digital transformation? Where are they in that process? Are mm -hmm. they in digitization, digitalization, or digital transformation? How mature are they in that? So we're helping folks migrate to the public cloud, build, iterate using the platforms that they offer from machine learning to AI, AI embedded code if they're doing cloud native application development, of course, and helping enterprises and mid-market companies really be successful leveraging the tools. Um, some of the customers we can talk about uh, I'm going by the ones on the website. There you go. Yeah, we can do That's that. That's actually too. a really good reference. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, those are yeah full consent. So like PGA of America and mm -hmm. Constellation Brands um, and First American Equipment and Next Gen Health. So you see the verticals there yeah. that we serve. And um, one of the largest Amazon partners in the world, one of 32 well-architected partners in the world. Um, and it's just growing so fast. And to have a team of Scott and Olga representing the brand is really a blessing to our business. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that, man. But it's for, true. But it's seriously, true. let me tell you something else. You know how I said, like, I don't know, I kind of do stuff and things, and you know, the the there there's a a little bit of truth to that in in the fact that this is an interesting, strong position to be in. I I spend most of my time helping people who are trying to challenge their way up the mountain. And Eagle Dream's challenge, honestly, is just the fact that like once you become that hot property, now everybody wants to say that that's your provider, mm -hmm. and you can't cover all of those bases on, before the window closes, right? Like before you know it, um, 
there are going to be some people who are mad that you didn't get to them. So you have to grow fast, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's what we really bring to the party is just the fact that like um, we're kind of already ready to go. Uh, worked in you know a lot of these different spaces, development. I mean, you've been you've been there for some of these stories, you know, mm-hmm. right? Um, so you're hitting the ground running on something new. So if I'm John, right, uh, I don't want anybody trying to get support and not being able to. Right. And that's that's what I think made it feel like we could make this work because and I'll give you a compliment back. So Eagle Dream Technologies is like five years old. You know, I mean, you may not even be that old. I, I think we just round up to five. Maybe round up to five, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> to go goes. from zero to one of these top AWS providers, which that's not easy to do. You know, that that really just becomes a question of can you represent them competently? And can you not step on your own feet while you're in front of that customer? Who I have a feeling a big bank international Esquire might be where somebody comes in and they, they, what's the word? Uh, they underestimate the audience. They, their mouth writes a check and the rest of them can't cash it. See, I tried to keep well it done. clean for you. Thanks. <laughs> um, you don't want to have that problem. You don't want to have a salesperson get themselves into a jam and then not be able to figure out a way out. Well, I think that's it too, Scott, is that we don't know how to sell. We're, we're all operators. We all mm-hmm. came from a Fortune 1000 business that we grew from zero to $2 billion on a successful exit in 2011, and we needed something else to do. So we're not the forever consultant. Wait, type. are you saying this is the hobby? <laughs> well, kind of felt that way, didn't it? <laughs> something else to do. Something yeah. else yeah. to do. Yeah, we got bored. And we did not. Well, the non competes needed to expire, right? We needed to yeah. wash our hands of that and get out of the way. But at the end of the day, we're not forever consultants or just a bunch of kids with certs. It's deeper than that. We know how to run an enterprise and mm-hmm. help so, them. We've 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 had to defend budgets before in front of boards. We know that stress that comes with that. I think that's what's maybe the secret sauce. But it, there's. 50 some thousand AWS resellers when you look at the list. It's, it's a huge number. Now, you know, John mentioned like the well architected, or uh, the well architected review, which is a framework, right? Or you, you go through this process. Let me make this like this is some verbiage I've been working on and it makes it, everybody understand it. And this is the kind of thing you can do when you've kind of been around the block and you know, like, why it sucks being a manager at a big corporation. <laughs> why? doesn't everyone know what features came out? Why don't we know what the cloud will do? There's like 1,500 new AWS features over the last 12 months. I get a lot of the emails just from the little, little bit of AWS I do. And okay. it, it's like the, the bits I get makes your head spin. And it's like stuff that I haven't seen and don't know how, like, where would this apply? But I'm also not on that enterprise level. But if I'm, okay, I'm so doing. if I'm your listener though, right? Yes. Like I'm a tech person, yeah. right? I'm thinking that I get these long emails and nobody can read them. Right. Is that a fair, I mean, you tell me. It's true. Yeah. To, okay. to, to retain the white papers. But there's 1500 new features. Tell me who it is that can read that. So I actually said to John earlier, I was like, I would love to see an AI tool that actually tells you which features you need to read about. Like that's all, you know, like what's your build? Hey, this applies to you. And like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it's just like it pokes you on the shoulder. It goes like, hey, don't ignore this one. Mm-hmm. Because you've now received this, like, it's just completely unmanageable information flow. And what do most people do? They create a folder. <laughs> they create a, there. yeah, they, they create a filing system where it goes to the folder. <laughs> and you go like, oh, I'll get to that. Yeah. And if I'm telling the truth, I don't. Like, I've got a couple other different things I keep try to keep track on. What's the latest with social media marketing? I don't read that. As you know who does read it? John. But he's Chilla. a robot. So Yeah, well, Ch- Chilla? Chilla, Chilla yeah. is on another level with everything, yeah. including yeah. The technology deployment spends, in his household. I think he spends three or four hours a night you just have to. reading You Remember the old CDW papers. commercial where the lady would sit around reading manuals? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Are we really that far from that now? No. no. <laughs> so, this, I mean, this is, this is definitely a, a space that you and John work with. Uh, chill or work with over there so so if i may ask without you know revealing your bruce wayne identity right <laughs> um did it always feel this way or or do you like me also see that keeping up with things has gotten not just harder because of like staff cuts i don't want to talk about staff cut type things i just want to talk about like the volume of information that you can get gigged on for not knowing oh yeah 
Well, but see, the pro- part of the problem is, though, is I love what I do. Yeah. And I do it whether I'm at work or I'm not at work. Mm-hmm. So I, I like John. Well, I'm, no, I don't, I'm not as far gone as John is because I do still have a social life. But uh, but wow, I, yeah. wow! Dude takes well, one night off. Dude yeah. takes no, one night. No, don't but take, seriously, though, John off. spends three, John spends three or four hours yeah. in the evening yeah. reading white papers, reading articles, and you know, in my spare time, I will take time to read articles and things like that, and we talk back and forth. But I don't, I don't spend when I'm done with work. If I can, I'm done with work. You know, you know what I mean? I imagine a world where, where Chili just reads the white papers to his kid at night to, well, to get him to sleep. Yeah, you know, but the yeah. kid won't go to sleep because he loves it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he is a you know John Mini John. So yeah, you know. yeah, exactly. He is you know Android is Android. You know, <laughs> fart Android, half Android, whatever. But but back into the math. Yeah. Fifteen hundred features means two a day. Yeah, that's a lot. See, first of all, I want you to correct me if that's numbers. Right. And that's just that AWS 1482 part. Is that doesn't mean that's you know, not GCP. That's right. not Azure. That's not Roku. Keep exactly. Going. All the other parts that go along with with. It. So that's a great. So the pace of innovation. Yes. You know, looking back over the last 15 years in your role. Yep. Do you and think we all do more with less, by the way. Well, right. That's a that's an excellent point. Do you think it's even faster today than it was 10 years ago? Oh, yes. not even close, right? Not even close. So, you know, that's where these digital native companies that are born in the cloud are coming in and undercutting those digitally migrant companies who aren't moving fast enough their entire customer bases. You talked about Uber and Lyft earlier. Look what they did to the taxi industry coming out of, you know, using platform services. Yeah. Or looking at PayPal and how many users they got using a digital market segment that was that had no boundary. Mm-hmm. You know, they were able to get 30 million users in a year. And so many of us just survive on it now survive on like it. we do our yes. business on it exactly and it's not just it, it, that's a real deal mm-hmm. so that's where these platform services are so strong to your point yeah and think about it paypal started just as a payment processing for mm-hmm. ebay it's basically right? a bank now mm-hmm. yeah. and now yeah it's yeah. it's a yeah, it's a bank so uh-huh. yeah we, we talked about this on one of the podcasts uh, that, uh from pitchworks and it was the television took 30 years to hit 50 million televisions yeah and if you look at paypal because of the mm. digital market segment and what companies can now do with, you know, borderless businesses, mm-hmm. uh, it's really incredible. But there's also a different expectation about, um, like, as consumers, we are so spoiled now that we don't understand how difficult it is to change the game because we watch people do it on such a daily basis, right? Like we were talking about how many different before before we started the show, you were talking to the you know the. Uh, Patreon folks about like, you know, here are the different social media platforms, right? Well, think about the, just the idea of getting enough people onto a platform, right? Like, like that's okay. So we now or show trying up to at, start a new one. That's what oh, I'm yeah. saying. It's, we accept that that's doable mm-hmm. and it's a, it's a really huge, weird task. It's like, okay, well I need to just pull, I don't know, let's say 10 million people onto a that's all. digital platform. Mm-hmm. And I hope it doesn't break while they're on it. <laughs> that'd be nice that feels right you know what's cool to also is i see it moving into marketing i see you guys thinking you guys i see it communities thinking more about customer experience yeah when that was typically a marketing function yeah and mm-hmm. i think that's really cool that it is looking at the customer and working backwards in a different way more than ever i think that's I think that's, that's, a, that's a big shift because a lot of people into it have not had to think about marketing it's kind of like the uh you know, how social media has brought things together. If I'm a media maker, I'm not thinking about the marketing, but now it's become one and the same, right? And, and the, the growing pains of people having to bring on that new skill set is interesting. It's very interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, 15 years ago, I think we saw the birth of the CTO or CIO position. Now we're seeing the CDO, Chief Digital Officer, which is coming in and talking about, you know, industry differentiating yeah. customer experiences, mm-hmm. those digital market segments and understanding these platform services and, what companies in those market segments that they're in are taking advantage of to provide those. And those are conversations I'm sure you're having every day, um, every day. which is, which is unique and fun and hard to keep up to the original point that Scott made. Well, I had Rasu Shrestha who just recently left UPMC enterprises and um, he was a chief innovation officer for UPMC too. He, he now has a similar role down in uh, North Carolina for Atrium Health. 
and and Rossi's one of the nicest, like most legit humans ever. Started off as a radiologist, found his way into technology, climbs the ladder. So he's got his uh, MBA and again, start off in radiology. Like this is a man of many lives. Um, and Rossu said that the main reason that he ended up in the chief innovation space was because people were too busy buying hammers, pretending that buying a hammer makes you a carpenter, right? Like everybody wanted to buy the tool. Everybody wanted to understand like that they could check the box. It says like, Oh, do we have this latest thing? Do we have this cybersecurity protection, do like whatever the tool was. Yeah, you could check the box and say like, okay, boss, I bought the thing you told me to buy. But that the patient was suffering because the patient was like the last thing you'd look at in the in, in the hospital room. And first of all, let's let's give him credit for even being willing to admit that, right? Because in a, in a role like that, that's a difficult thing yeah. to come clean about. And he's like, look, you know, there shouldn't be this screen and this. Uh, what do they call them? Cows, uh, cows on wheels system, cow on or computer on wheel system. Um, you never heard that? You're giving me the quizzical look. I think I've seen the, oh, the I reference, like but I never, I never heard it. <laughs> computer on wheel. Yeah, that's what it was. It was just CO, it was computer on wheels, and they yeah. call them cows, right? And then cows go in pastures, and it's this whole thing. But you know, while we're all sitting here patting ourselves on the back about the tools we have, and like, oh, we got the budget that we wanted. The customers, the patient, is in the the bed not getting eye contact. Mm -hmm. And that's, again... Oh, right, because you're too busy looking at the screen. Right. And that's what Rasu did that was different than maybe a lot of other people. He just Hmm. said, like, look, let's be thinking about what it is that people need. That's what a chief digital officer does now that maybe uh, a technology person doesn't do or or a CIO doesn't do, right? Fred Smith is the former CEO of FedEx, and he wrote a book about how the package was less important than knowing where the package was mm-hmm. for his customers. And that's what he went for is no, is wow. if his customers knew where the package was at all times, that's actually more important than the, than the actual delivery. Mm-hmm. So you start thinking about, wow, that is, you don't yeah. care if it's, you, you don't care if it's late if you were told it was late. Exactly. Right? And, that's and I think that's care. a really cool way to look at it. Wow. That's so great. Cause when I order something from Amazon <laughs> and I can click that link and it hasn't been updated in three Dude. hours, I'm like, okay, where is this thing you at? Know how many you times? mentioned eBay. True. Uh, you mentioned eBay, where where somebody enters it into the mailing system but doesn't actually take it anywhere near the the carrier. Yeah. And you're sitting there going, "I've had an email for three days. Where's my crap?" Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or or I don't know how many times Amazon. I've been like not in the office. So like send it to the guys in the back. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so exactly. Like like two stops from it coming here to the office. But anyways, no uh, great stuff you guys are doing. Uh, uh, once again, where can people find out what's going on with everything? So I would honestly just direct them. We're doing a lot with this well architected review mm-hmm. because what it does is it walks people through rather than just the software piece, the actual architecture piece, which frankly. Like some of the verbiage I'm working on right now to help people sort of get the light bulb moment is, like, do you need an architect in your life? Mm-hmm. So we have an intake form. Just uh, if you go to same website, kernels.co slash Eagle Dream, all one word, you'll see exactly what what uh, we're doing together. And if, if it feels right, and again, I think just having a, a proper architect is better than most people have. You can go through this whole questionnaire and it's like, okay, I'm not sure if we're secure or I'd like to include AI. I just don't know, like, how does that work? Is it canned or do I have to have it written? You know, Uh, John, we were on a different conversation earlier today and John was telling me about HoloLens. What was it? Deep Lens. Deep Lens. Sorry. HoloLens is Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're a marketing person and you want to do sentiment analysis, that's like a regular thing you can just like put in your cart and right buy now, retail. right? <laughs> but we don't know that because we don't talk about it. So, Absolutely. yeah, if you if you check that out, click the button, do the intake form, we'll talk to you. And, uh, you know, the well-architected at least protects you from those, you know, those weird sort of rookie mistakes that you make without an architect. Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on for uh, and talking with us oh, about pleasure it. To I be can't here. tell you how much fun I am having just being back in <laughs> I mean, especially now that the sun go- sun's gone down. Yeah, yeah, now we're blinded. not blinded by the sun. That's mother nature. <laughs> Jeez. 
Uh, but anyways, Dang sun keeping the earth warm. <laughs> yeah, how dare it? <laughs> how dare it? <laughs> you know who else is delivering goodness? Our good friends at Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good a long time here in the Sorgatron Media Tuesday Night Podcast World. That's not the ad. Wait, did it? Where? Did it? There it is. Nope. The ad should guys. have been the pizza you Boom, served. Boom! There us. it is. Uh, sliceonbroadway.com here in Beachview, right up the street, the original, the OG on Broadway, as well as in Carnegie, the East End and PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, will be kicking off very soon with their uh, new season. Uh, so go get a slice while you're there and let them know the awesome cast sent you. PGH underscore slice on the Twitter, sliceonbroadway.com, on online ordering and everything. Uh, thank you to them for supporting the awesome cast. All right, we got a couple of stories here from the Awesome Cast group. I want to make sure we touch on a couple of them since you guys have been great and hanging out on the Awesome Cast Facebook group with a few great stories here. Uh, first of all, I think this was kind of fun and maybe a slight political move too. Uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> Amanda's out there and talking about how uh, uh, sometimes her boss is fun. She works at the Apple Store out here in the South Hills. And uh, 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 this week, apparently... Um, the uh, Apple Apple's Tim Cook uh, changed his name to Tim Apple on the Twitter, <laughs> yes, I believe, in a reference to our president referring to him as Tim Apple. In um, a, a you know Tim speech. from Apple, you know yeah. Tim it's Apple, it's easier Apple, that way. Tim yeah. Apple. Apple, Tim, Come just on. like uh, you know John General Motors and um, and uh, <laughs> Ron. What was it? Tim. Big Apple. International Bank Esquire. Big, or yes, 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 exactly. Yes. Right. That's a hell of a handle yeah, you got there, Krause. I'll tell you what. <laughs> So that was kind of a fun thing. Also, uh, Brandon, our friend from Kansas City, um, this is this is fun. So I noticed one of these. Uh, you guys remember with Carvana? You, know, you see the commercials all yeah, the time, right? Yes. Well, apparently, um, they, they built one of these um, on 79, you know, where that Top Golf is that I feel like a T Rex should be in. So there was a video the local news did of what is this strange structure that's going on over by the highway? So what this is, it's like a giant car vending machine yeah. that they build. And and this is like how they do it. Like a, a Carvana, I think, like delivers the car to your home. I'm seeing more and more cars with the Carvana like stickers and license plates like around town, right? Um, and uh, this is, of course, I think an incomplete one. Hopefully they have a image here of the finalized one. But it does look like that like giant vending machine thing. And it's all lit up and you see it, you know, they obviously build it like, you know, pretty much buy a highway to, so to to advertise kind of what's going on with them right um and uh it's a uh, kind of a fun thing that they have going on uh, so so i guess it was <laughs> it puzzled the kansas city people uh when it was being built over there us we just had a giant top golf to distract us from the fact that this thing was going <laughs> up apparently and we're just like oh crap what's that uh so that does kind of feel like a weird lab out there it's like it i don't know just build it there well it's weird so, so and then since i've been traveling a little bit more in the last month now i find top golfs everywhere I I went and met a friend that that uh, they got married in, yeah. in in Dallas like in October and I find out I found out you know a significant other like works at Top Golf I'm like what is this what is this like Top Golf cult that seems to be happening in my world mm -hmm. right people now people like golf sort people really like I golf have, the food apparently. is delicious is there, it though I will give a, I'll give, that is not driving around I've food. never been yeah. phenomenal go jeez. But after you're done with the Weight Watchers thing, I, I, yeah, <laughs> the chicken wings. I yeah, I'm the, yeah. See, I'm the one that worked for like a year and a half on the country club and never went golfing. You'll be out of so. points like ten minutes in. Yeah. Oh <laughs> man. Here's a shot. Here, if you guys are on uh, uh, the video, here's a shot. If you go to Carvana's website, uh, you will see uh, the the tower structure in question here. Uh, that looks like that kind of vending machine situation there. So you can go. A car vending machine, though. So that is cars? just kind of cool. You, you, you buy cars. Yeah, you, you buy cars. Like I think the whole idea is you buy the car online and they deliver it to you. That's it. I Instead think, of you going to a lot. And I think you could pick it up, though. Or you probably you can pick it up. Like, but if at they, the vending machine. That's at, what at I would do. Yeah, at the vending machine. And I machine. think that's why they do it is they want you to come pick it up because mm -hmm. that's a cooler story than the guy with the backing Right, oh, yeah. beeper but in I, your driveway. I, I that just kind of takes I, something I, well, away the, from it. The, the flatbed looks kind of cool too. Um, flatbed is lame. Come, <laughs> come to the vending machine. <laughs> come to the vending machine. I mean, you know, if they have a place like that, right? <laughs> if you, you know, it, it's like the Apple Store. They're going to build it in, you know, uh, metropolitan areas. Yeah. They're the right, you know, the right, the right thing for it, right? I, mean, I don't know. I think that that I think that's a not a bad look. Vending fresh cars. Daily. There you go. Daily. There you go. I think they all have to be used though, don't they? 
Are they, they don't have they a, used? I'm almost certain because um, long, long ago in the days of yore, I, I used to work for the Rorix. I was a, I was a wet behind the ears, like twenty year old, and the I'm here to tell you that the National Automotive Dealers Association ranks right up there near like the NRA in terms of clout. Like they can get stuff done if they choose to. And that's one of the reasons why Tesla's had such a hard time. I was going to say, why are why is Tesla getting away with everything they're getting they away didn't. with? They didn't. Like, you can't buy one, remember, at those showrooms that they had? Nope. Right. You had to go test drive one. Yep. But you can't actually there buy are, one. There are no lots. So and they got rid of them, too. The showroom, mm-hmm. uh, they've been closing them. Yeah. You know, specifically just because they just decided, if you're going to put the hammer down and, you know, cut costs and mm-hmm. people know what Teslas are. And, they, and they've been a, um, I mean, it's been, it's been a, it's a tough go with them, manufacturing problems. Uh, talked with somebody that worked with one of the, in one of the plants uh, one time and it just, you know, the, it's been bringing the old minded and new minded people into what they're building has been a difficulty for them. Absolutely. So. But if you could sell new cars from like I don't know an assortment out of a vending machine, I'd be amazed. I'll pretty much guarantee you they're all used. Uh, there is like a certified trading program, et cetera, et cetera. When I'm, I'm kind of poking through the site here, so I think I think you're right about that. Okay. Um, also from the Amanda, actually, Sony finally releases their PS4 Remote Play app for your iOS devices. That is big. And, and I guess pretty much, a, I, mean, I feel like Xbox is going to do this sooner or later because they're already doing it on their PC platforms. They're already like opening things up and cross-platforming things, you know, uh, to to the point where they're talking about Xbox Live being cross cross-platform. But uh, it's kind of cool that, that that PlayStation seems to be kind of a closed thing, right? And they're opening up that you can play. This is this is you know typically, I, I believe going to be if you're on the Wi-Fi, if the PlayStation's on the same Wi-Fi, it will stream in-house right. when you're dealing with something like this. So I know you're you're an Xbox person, Kraus. Yes, I am. So what are you thinking about the story like well, this? Well, I have to tell you, um, I think it's a great idea, and I have used... You literally have an Xbox controller in your shot. Yes. <laughs> oh, see, I feel like I'm at home. There you go. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, we make everybody comfortable here. Yes, thank you. Um, Except Sony. I fans. have used the Xbox Remote Play to my uh, laptop in the house, and it does work fairly well. I can't believe I've never, I've never used it. I, yeah. I, and I have like low powered laptops. I'll be great for that. Uh huh. It works. You know, it works fairly well. Um, I've connected controller wired to the, you know, that's the one thing to transition back to the Xbox. The Xbox always is like, Hey, wait, we're, this is a new controller. It doesn't, so you have to repair it, but it work. It works just fine. It's, it's great in those instances where maybe the wife and the great niece are watching a movie or something. And I don't care. Help bring out the laptop, <laughs> hook up the controller, and I'm still playing Xbox. You know, and Surface Pro probably works pretty well for that too. Yeah, that probably. would work very probably. well. Probably, yeah, because they just needed enough to like stream video and have a, have some low latency with that and a decent Wi-Fi, and you're you're, yeah. pretty, you're pretty set. So, um, also on the video game side, it was funny because we were just talking about full sale in a couple different aspects here. Uh, I know them because I know that's where uh, uh, WWE's NXT often films there. And I wish I made a different choice in my uh, uh, media education. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> uh, I don't think Full Sail was f- full on like it is now. In your defense, in it felt like a scam back when we were coming up. Yes, it did. Yes, it I, did. That, you did the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> Iron State it's Pittsburgh. They were like, hey, you can work on video games and get paid $100,000. Like, that's not real. You know how they got me in? <laughs> you know how they got me in? Uh, they showed me, they, they showed me uh, Rebel Assault, which yeah. was not a great game, by the way. Uh, as a whole, uh, one of those full motion video deals back in the day. I was like, somebody from our school worked on this, you know. And then the way you you think now, now as you know the industry goes, it's like, yeah, they worked on like coloring a blade of gla- grass or something, right? Like it's not like it's not a glorious job. <laughs> they make cool things, but it's not cool to get to that. But yeah. Anyways, uh, the point of the story, not my poor educational decisions uh is uh <laughs> full sale is apparently going to do an esports arena worth 16 million dollars for them to build a, a bet on the future of pro gaming at full sale university wait how much uh 16? i don't know they're calling it a 16 million dollar bet here for i'm six. sorry six i added a one uh it's so they're building an 11,000 uh, that's it i'll 200 be on my Square foot fortress, <laughs> fortress sports arena is what they're calling it. Customizable space equipped with uh, high tech monitors and video production equipment. 
officially opening in May. Seeing what they've done for like like what that production studio uh, looks like looks like uh, for the uh, I think did they call it a full sale arena or something that they do a lot of the WWE shows in. Like it's pretty amazing what they have going on there. So that's a huge number. Sponsor an esports team. Can I just say? Not to sound like the old guy in the room, which I probably am. No, that's on the gold earlier today. <laughs> but, but the whole watching other people play video games. Don't get me wrong. I love video games. I play lots of video games. Hey, you know all those people doing Snapchat? <laughs> but unless I'm looking for specific help in mm-hmm. a video game that I'm playing, yeah, I don't find watching someone else play a video game all that entertaining i know exactly where you're coming from now let me tell you how you and i are going to end up being wrong Uh, okay okay this is i i swear to you i think this is the truth i think john once said to me and and i i think he was in the studio when we were doing a show together he said if you get on board with technology late you have to wait to catch up right okay the young kids got on board with video games late. So this idea that all of these tropes of video games come naturally to them, that's not real, right? Think about it. Like a lot of what we know about how to work a video game comes from past games and us having been there for the story, right? Like we right. saw, I don't know, there's Donkey Kong over there on the wall. So we'll start start there, right? Donkey Kong gave way to Mario Brothers, gave way to blah, da, 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 yeah, da. And the next fall, thing you know, right, you've yeah. got like almost photorealistic video games that use these conventions that we've been building on for 30 years, 40 years, right? Same idea here. I think those kids watch the video because they're learning things that you and I already know. But then what will happen is this tool will get used in a different way. And they'll make games that are more complex because they know that there's a a spectator market for it. So now you don't have to make simple games. You can make super hard games. And if you want to learn how to play, just watch first. It and creates, it. yeah, it, it's, well, it's like that, a, uh, what do you call well, it, an abundance mindset. I think not only that, I think with the way some of these video games are, um, you may be in for the story, but don't want to go through the playing, right? Oh, yeah. oh, or, okay. or the entertainment of watching somebody play a fort guy, a Fortnite game, and they themselves are the personality. Like this is, I think this is more an extension of that YouTube generation mm. for the most part, right? And it's competitive. You know, I, I watch a League of Legends thing because WWE did one on the network. Where they did a League of Legends, uh, you know, WWE versus NXT thing, and they had a couple of pro guys and and, and the, the the right people announcing, and I was like, okay, I kind of understand what's going on, but I've never played it, right? Right. Like most, I think that watch it have at least played it and know what the game is, and are watching people play. Hey, man, you know, I know how to play football, right? But that doesn't stop me from watching the Steelers because those are the professionals. But you like, actually just said League of Legends, which I've heard a thousand times. I have no idea what it is. Like I'll be the first one to tell you. Right. I don't know. Right, right. And because because you know said you know so it, maybe I would watch. Yeah, well they usually. I think have, you're like I said. I th- I think you're and no, right and from I that perspective. That, but, but I get that part, and maybe that's the part of it I'm missing, because the whole competitiveness of the video game. Because I love and uh, the NFL. I watch football. Uh, you know, I I love the Steelers, bleed black and gold, and but if the Steelers aren't playing, I'm not watching. So maybe, you know, but but that whole idea of watching someone play a game that I wouldn't be able to do. Because, you know, the Twitch gaming, I'm 50 well, years old. And also, we're talking about esports. We're talking about people right. that are playing the game at a peak level. At a high, that, really high like, level. Like they are, at, at, they are professionals at a peak level that you and I are probably not going to get to. See now, because it's interesting, because when you first started talking about the story, the first thing I thought of, was the people like Ninja and them playing the video games on yeah, yeah. on but, Twitch? So, so, but this is a little different, than right? That. You were, we're talking. So, there's 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 the online video gaming as entertainment, right. and then there's the online video games as esports professional right. competition. Like this, like they're both they're in a similar space, but it's different. Right, I, I, you know, lines but from those. an age perspective, I'm with you. Yeah. I cannot. <laughs> no, I I can't get excited about like this team versus that team. No, right, I no, think no. that's part of what you're saying. Yeah, but I also can't get excited for Riverhounds soccer. Do these esports players get paid? 
Oh yes, I think they do. Yeah, well, yeah. So like, but also technically, this they is have going to, win, to be. I think the more uh, they win, the and, more and they win. I'm curious make, about this because this, this is going to be for because now colleges are getting into it. Yeah. So that, now you get into that NCAA thing. Right. So now what happens with the sponsorships? Because now sponsorships are a big thing with esports. So I don't know what that story is. It's and a money printing. Now issue. there are. If you're curious about this, last I knew, there are at least like three documentaries about esports on Netflix. So awesome. no, <laughs> jump into the like seriously. There's some homework for you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just that, fit it into my true. spare time. Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> in your trailer. In my trailer. In your trailer. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. When I'm pouting, me and AB are pouting in my trailer. <laughs> oh, anyway. AB who? Yeah. Yes. Can I kick dirt on that guy on this show, or is that a different show? Go I, take know, it. If you want a sports podcast. Okay, all care. seriousness. <laughs> sports AB, moment. This is AB, a sports if break. you are one of the many people that watches this show, I need you to get checked out for CTE. That's all I'm saying. There you go. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, guys, some... <laughs> You know, if you're confused by the uh, the idea of uh, your design or logos or websites, check out our friend Alexander Cars. He's on the left coast out there in California, but we've been doing some work with him here over the years. Don't hold it against Alex him. Car- no, no, don't hold it against him. AlexCars.media. That's K-A-H-R-S. Uh, again, he's uh, solving the mystery of your design and uh, development. Um, go check him out. Uh, he does everything from branding to print to digital production. Uh, merchandise, websites, uh, even photo and video projects. Please go check them out. Al- AlexCars.media. Alex, K A H R S dot media. And thank you to him for supporting the show. So, um, uh, coming up here, uh, we got uh, the usual uh, stuff. Uh, if you tune in Thursday morning here in the studio, we'll be doing Pittsburgh Current Podcast. Uh, and I know they got, they got a few pretty good. Uh, guests coming up in the coming uh, weeks. Uh, this week it is going to be John Dick Winters with the. Uh. <laughs> oh, you're aware of him. <laughs> I don't think I've had I've done a show with him just yet. Um, John has real talent, mm-hmm. right? Um, it's always funny to see what he's going to say. He has this, and we'll of- be live on Facebook with him. Hey, you did it with me, and we all know what that I'm is true. Say, right, but he's going—he's the founder of the Burning Bridges Comedy uh, Fest, and we'll be discussing the upcoming uh, festival that's coming up on the twenty-first. Uh, so that'll be on the Pittsburgh Current uh, Facebook cool. page, YouTube, Periscope, and podcast. So, uh, however you want to receive that, our good friends over there on the network, check out a lot of other great stuff. Our friends, the Bardic Mystery Tour on the net, new newcomer to the network. Um, speaking of things that maybe you are, are or are not into, um, how about uh, live D&D playing on uh, their podcast? So go check that out. It is a lot of fun. It, it got me got me through my trip back from Dayton a couple weeks ago. Uh, so, uh, you know, overnight. And uh, let's see, Thrifty Podcast, I think just I saw just put a new podcast up. I saw them last night at the uh, wrestling show. Uh, always some fun stuff there. Um, I and mean, they talk about pro wrestling and Ninja Turtles like on the regular. So it's just like, I mean, they're my people at that point, right? So, I mean, geez, what do I got right here is Ninja Turtles and a pro wrestling shirt on. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, that's my life. Welcome to it. Now that you Call mentioned- me when the turtles start wrestling. All right, then we're cooking with grease. You know, there is a comic book I have from when I was about eight years old where they were wrestling. Okay. Nice. And I do believe they did release. Failed to call release, me, so uh, they did here we are. that's what stuck in Sorg's brain they, for the rest of his life. There was also this thing where they they inter, interdimensional travel, but they had to jump in the 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 mouth of a cow's head. Michael, I'm sorry, I asked. I mean, I'm sorry, and, I asked. Uh, and they did release something a few weeks, a few months, no, a couple years ago, where it was the turtles, but dressed up like WWE people, like you do. That's cool. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, see, see, yeah. see, John's, see what you John's on Team Sorg. There that. you go. There you go. And by the way, my wife says that when I put my backpack on to go to work, it reminds her of a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> oh boy, so. we gotta get you the Ninja Turtle backpack. We'll get you the Ninja Turtle backpack. Yeah, there the we show. go. And they'll they'll yeah. love that at Big Bank International Esquire. Ron Kraus, Crazy Kraus with the K's on the Twitter. Yes, I am. What are you talking about over there? Uh, I don't really do a whole lot of talking. I do, do more, more reading. I do more reading. Than if you talking. if you have tech questions, but actually, somebody reached out to me from the show, <gasps> having a, a few weeks, months ago, um, having an Android problem, and I tried like hell to help them. There you go. You're, I think uh, we wound up getting it fixed though. So there you go. You're, so you know, your I personal do do Android phones and tablets for Big Bank International. That's right. That's professionally smart. and unprofessionally on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. 
Scott McTaggart, Ooh. where can people find the things that you are doing one more time? So, yeah, check us out over at the Pitchworks podcast when you're not listening to this fine program. Mm-hmm. Check out my fine program over at P-I-T-C-H. It's a nice white one-two punch between us. What's up? <laughs> P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S. And, yeah, uh, basically everything I talked about today you can find on the Colonel's website, kernels.co. That's, uh, take all the vowels out just because you're exciting that way. K-R-N-L-S dot C-O. John, where can we find everything going on with you? EagleDream.com or certainly reach out to Scott McTaggart. Oh, you see. K-R-N-L-S dot co. I like it. He's just like, yeah, you could reach out to me, but it'd be better if you found the big head of Nick. <laughs> There's only one. Right? Thank you, producer Missy, for uh, reminding me of my timing on this show <laughs> and everything. We swear we'll get you a mic there next week. Uh, thank you, everybody, that's been, in the, uh, that's been in the chat room with us this evening as well. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.